How's it going everybody? Welcome back to that car vlog channel. If you don't already know, my name is Andy and today we'll be checking out the all new fully redesigned 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe. But before we begin, I have to give a special shout out, huge thanks to the folks here at Rusty Wallace Hyundai of Knoxville, Tennessee for allowing me to use the brand new Santa Fe for today's review. Once you're done watching this video, make sure to go to the description below where you'll find a link to their website so you can check out this vehicle and the rest of their great inventory. All right, back to the new Santa Fe. Now the Hyundai Santa Fe first debuted here in the United States right around the middle of the year 2000 for the 2001 model year. And at the time it was an okay looking, kind of bubbly, maybe even a little bit blobby what would be considered at that time midsize crossover SUV. That was the 2001 model year. 23 years later, this is what Hyundai has done with the Santa Fe. As you can see here, Hyundai has completely redesigned their Santa Fe to be more rugged looking and uh, a bit more daring, if you will. And just as a heads up, the letter H is going to be a huge theme throughout this vehicle. Let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start out by looking at the key fob for the new Hyundai Santa Fe, and this is for pretty much all new Hyundais. And the biggest interesting thing about the key fob is it is the Hyundai logo. How do you like that? And then here in the negative space of the logo is where they put all the buttons. So you got your lock, unlock, your remote starter, and your panic button. And then turn it over on its side, and you've got the button here to release the lift gate. And these two buttons, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later. As always, we'll start here on the exterior of the car, first looking at the front here at the nose, and you're gonna see the first place that the H theme shows up, and that's right here in your daytime running lamp slash turn signal lights right here. You can see they are the H pattern, and as you can probably see looking close, it is a white running lamp light that changes to amber whenever the signal blinks. Integrated above and below that, of course, are your LED headlights. Coming across the entire front end, you do have a light bar LED that spans all the way across the front. Obviously my camera doesn't like that very well. And of course, over to the passenger side, you get that H pattern again. So if we pull back and look at this thing head on, you can see it's actually kind of neat looking. The H's on the front do not stop there, however. Look down here and the difference between the matte and the gloss black right here. You can see that has another kind of H pattern as we go over to the other side. That H pattern kind of continues. It's more noticeable on a lighter colored car. Now, interesting touch right here. This shiny part is actually not your grill. There might be a little bit of airflow in there, but pretty much isn't your grill. Your main grill is gonna be right down here, closer to the ground. And you see right here in the middle, there's the spot where your sensors are gonna be for things like adaptive cruise control. Then when we come up from that, you've got a front facing camera sitting in between two active shutters that will open and close automatically as the vehicle feels it needs to for cooling and aerodynamics. If we move our way over to the side, you're going to see there's this vent here, kind of like an air curtain or an air vent that channels air into the body of the car and then back out right here in front of the wheels. I don't know how well you can see that. Once again, adding a little bit of aerodynamics to the vehicle. If we come back around here to the nose of the vehicle, you're going to see your Hyundai logo is actually almost flush and it's actually on the front of the hood of the car instead of on the grill like most vehicles. Kind of cool. Looking at it from a profile, you can see that hood does come down a little bit like that, adding a little bit more aerodynamics. So as boxy as this thing looks, it does have some aerodynamic touches. Coming down the side, you can see you got your LED side marker lamp right here, but then you also have an additional reflector right here in the fender of the car, which is interesting. Most vehicles just make those two things the same piece. Hyundai decided to make them separate. You're also gonna see what looks like a parking sensor here in the fender, which is kind of cool. It's gonna be, it's something that's gonna alert you when something is here at your fender, so you don't hit it, much like the sensors in the front and rear bumpers. Interesting touch with this wheel arch too. You can see it come, kind of comes up like this right here. Kind of looks like maybe some off-road rugged wheel arch. And then you get the plastic bit below it that is curved with the wheel. Kind of interesting touch. Most manufacturers just bring the metal all the way down and it's either this shape or this shape, you usually don't get both shapes. So think what you will about that. I don't mind it, it looks kind of cool. Some people might not think so. It's a neat look though. While we're looking at the fenders, you're gonna see that Hyundai put this Santa Fe badge right here and it's black on every trim. Once again, it shows up better on lighter trims and does have a little fake vent. Now they could have left this alone unless this is one big piece of the same color, but it does really help on the lighter trims to kind of break that up, add some contrast. And it's kind of sort of a mirror image to the shape of the headlight. Now we are looking at the limited trim Santa Fe today. So these are the wheels you're gonna get on the limited trim. These 20 inch wheels with five wide spoke. I actually really think these are pretty good looking wheels, honestly. Coming down the side, you're gonna see that matte black plastic cladding continues down there. It's got a silver accent in it. Depending on the trim and configurations you get, that may also be gloss, but I'm pretty sure that's on the calligraphy, which we're not seeing offered yet to the public. Up here you do have your body mash mirror caps with the integrated turn signal because it is a foreign car. 
Uh, this may be easier to see on a lighter colored vehicle. You see, we've got the black trim right here on the B pillar, right here on the C pillar, right here on the D pillar black trim and glass. It looks like one continuous strip of glass. And it's an especially nice contrast against a lighter colored vehicle. Of course, you've got your roof rails up here also in black. Interesting thing about this panel right here behind the second row window, it's not just a black panel, it's actually another window. So you have your stationary and you have the one that rolls up and down. But from the outside, it looks very cohesive. And now we're gonna make our way around to the rear of the car, starting here, of course, at the corner where things are gonna get really interesting. Let's see what y'all think. So coming down here, starting to the side, you got this big piece of red taillight-like plastic. You think, what does this thing do? What is that there for? It's mostly there for style, but it does house the side marker lamp as well. And just like in the front, Hyundai did the side marker lamp and the side reflector as separate pieces. We're gonna stay at this level, but come around back and you're gonna see your taillights, once again, continuing that H theme on the back of the car. You see they are both your tail and your brake and turn signal. But what's interesting here is they're actually mounted on the lift gate of the vehicle, which goes against a particular federal regulation saying that your tail and headlights cannot be on moving body panels. So how did Hyundai get, get around this? Much like any other manufacturer does, they added auxiliary lights. So if we open the hatch here, you can see as soon as it opens, it moves down to that strip down there. Kind of neat, that's how Hyundai gets around that. That's how they can have that style. While I've got the lift gate open, you can see they also integrated the tag lights into the bottom of the lift gate because this is how they designed with the tag. That's kind of interesting. If we push this button, close it back down, you can see as it comes back down, it's gonna take those auxiliary lights, it's gonna transfer them back to the lights mounted on the lift gate as soon as it latches. Coming down low below the auxiliary lights, you're gonna see this is where Hyundai put the reverse lights on the car. They're down here close to the ground. Here you got your big silver Hyundai logo. This would be blacked out on your XRT, the more off-roady trim, but it's silver here. I think also on the soon to come calligraphy trim. And then of course the Santa Fe lettering right here, big lettering all the way across the lift gate. Looking up from that big glass panel, you're gonna be wondering, is there a rear wiper on this thing? It looks like there isn't. Then if we look up in here behind the brake light, you're gonna see there it is. There's your rear wiper, which is really nice because it keeps it tucked away and hidden. It doesn't look ugly, but it is there when you need it. Now, as we open up and step on into the interior, we'll take a look at the door panel here, of course. First of all, you got this nice silver trim runs all the way down, looks really nice. You got your two buds for your driver's seat memory right here. Door pull right here looks kind of nice integrated into that trim. And then right here, you got this little piece of darker wood trim right here. Looks really, really nice. Down here, nice soft touch material on the armrest. Here's all your power controls for your window slash rear door lockout. Power windows, auto up and down for the front. Lock buttons and mirror controls. Down here, of course, a little bit of storage. Not a lot of door storage on this car. A little bit here, and you got a bottle holder right here. And here you've got Bose. This is the limited trim. It does have the 12 speaker premium Bose sound system, which is not available on any trim below limited. Looking at your door sill right here, that H theme continues right here. And this uh, little design right here looks kind of interesting. Here's the controls for your eight way power adjustable front seats. And you can see if we continue up, there is no Hyundai logo, but you do still have that H theme continuing right here in the back headrest. Perforated leather because you are gonna get heated and cooled seats up front in this car. Starting here at the left of the steering wheel, that H theme continues again right here in the air vents. You can kind of see that H theme going on right there. You can see you got your vertical strip right here, your horizontal strip right there, and then that horizontal strip actually continues all the way across the dash all the way to the passenger side where you see another vertical strip right there, the big long H pattern in the ambient lighting. While we're over here on the right side of the wheel, you can see there's your start stop button kind of integrated there in with the air vents. And you can see that H theme continues all the way across. I do like these air vents. I like how they're integrated into one row right down here. They've even got this little area right here, which is filled in. It's not a vent, but they continue the theme through it to make it mostly seamless. Looks kind of good. Now looking dead on at our steering wheel, this is an interesting looking wheel. And the biggest thing that jumps out to me is the fact that there is no Hyundai logo on the wheel. Automakers have been putting their logo on their steering wheels forever, as long as I can possibly remember and way beyond that. But here you just get this, this line right here. I'm not entirely sure what that is, what the uh, reason for that is, why their Hyundai has decided not to put a logo on this, but a lot of their new vehicles 
are actually coming out with this instead of your logo. Kind of interesting. You do have some handy controls right here. These right here, of course, are going to handle your adaptive cruise control, your driver assist aids, that kind of thing. And over here on the right are going to be controls for things like your volume, your phone, your infotainment, that kind of thing. You do have two interesting buttons right here. You do have this mode button. So let's focus in on the infotainment screen real quick, and I'll hit that mode button. And it brings up this menu right here. It's kind of interesting. You can select any number of these things right here. Bluetooth audio, Amazon music, phone projection, sounds of nature, FM, AM, Sirius, whatever. You can select as many of these as you want to correspond to that mode button. And then once you saved that, whenever you hit this mode button, it'll switch in between those selected modes. If you want to add or remove, of course, go back into settings. You can add or remove functions from that. Then down here, you have the star button. This is kind of a favorites button. So if I hit this button right here, it's going to take you in here now, and you're going to select what you want that star button to do. Do you want it to take you to driver assistance settings? Do you want it to start your maps, take you to your home screen, voice memos, whatever, even reject and call whatever you want that button to do. So what you got basically is a single function favorites button right here and a multi-function mode button. On the back side of the steering wheel here, here's your, of course your headlight, turn signal stock, that kind of thing. Over here is going to be your wiper stock, stuff like that. I do kind of like the switch they use for the intermittent settings. You do have paddle shifters on this thing, which are going to be used to control your eight-speed wet style dual clutch transmission in this thing. Definitely interested to get that thing out on the road, see what it's like being, of course, a dual clutch. But we're not done on the back side of the steering wheel just yet. Let's kind of rotate around here, and you're going to see one more big stock hanging off this steering wheel. This is going to be your transmission selector. So right here, if I put my foot on the brake and twist all the way down, as you can see, it puts it into reverse. If I put it all the way up, it's going to put it into drive push this button right here on the end it'll put it back into park if you do need neutral just turn it slightly in one direction or the other it puts it into neutral push the button again to put it into park so kind of an interesting transmission selector there i don't mind it some people may think it's weird but it definitely helps to do one very important thing and that is free up space in this center console so that you can have more features that don't revolve around controlling the transmission. Speaking of the center console area, let's go ahead and talk about that right now, starting right here at the top. Here are all the buttons for your media controls, which I love this. You have the 12.3 inch touchscreen, but you still have physical controls for your media. Power and volume, here's the buttons for home and maps and what for your infotainment. Gonna come over here, here's, you know, track and station selector. Down below that, you got dual zone climate control, and I do kind of like how this is controlled. First of all, I love that it's down here separate from the screen. You don't have to rely on that to control your climate control. But there's not a lot of physical controls for this thing. You do have your temperature adjustment knobs, which actually also double as screens. So if we turn the system on, you see right here, you got a little display in the center of each knob that, of course, is going to control your temperature. Over here, you got the one for your passenger. And if you want to synchronize the temperature between both zones, push here, and now it's synchronized. Push again, you can turn that off. This is also a button This control whether or not you're an automatic climate control or not and then you've got your array of buttons in the center which i thought at first were just capacitive touch but i'm starting to think it actually is a little touch screen because these controls are a little bit more interactive than just capacitive touch watch as i tap the ac button to turn everything on you get a little bit of feedback from it off button you see you get a little bit of feedback on either side of the button right there tap that ac button right there here's your fan controls you can click 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 up and down on your fan speeds of course, you got your positioning controls to tell it which way you want the air to blow. You can switch between front or rear climate controls. Of course, here's your recirc, all that stuff right here on this screen. And then you've got your heated and cooled seats. If we tap right here on the heated, you see beep, beep, beep. You get three levels of heating and you get three levels of cooling. And yes, you do get the beep feedback. I'm assuming that there is going to be a setting in the infotainment to take that away if you find that annoying. But you're going to get a beep feedback from pretty much everything you push in this car below your climate controls you got a few more buttons right here you got the button to turn on and off your parking sensors here's a parking camera which we'll show in a second hill descent assist auto start stop off button the best button in any modern car and auto hold for your brake so if you're stopped on a hill and you don't want to you know accidentally roll forward or backwards whether you're taking foot off the brake or whatever and you don't want to accidentally roll you can hit that and it'll hold until of course you accelerate and then right here you got your drive mode selector let's jump up to the gauge screen now and check out the different drive modes so we move this drive mode selector up and down we're going to start out in normal mode and your gauge cluster theme is going to change with each one so there's normal mode let's go now into sport mode you can see this the theme gets a little bit more sporty it's kind of nice Go into my drive which is going to be a personalized drive mode those are the drive modes in your brand new santa fe i really do like the sport mode it looks sporty continuing down from that row of switches you got this big open area right here which houses a wireless charging pad for your phone love 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 this 
You can see right here, it'll tell you, it actually gives you a little status, charging, 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 as it is charging up your phone. Please ignore my phone, I need to fix the screen on it. Now looking over here on the right side, you would think this is also a wireless charger that has dual wireless charging. Because this is not the calligraphy trim of the car, which is not yet available as, the, as of the time I'm making this video, this is not a wireless charger. You can only get the wireless dual charging in the calligraphy trim. I do wish that they would offer it as an option for lower trims because I really think it is a handy thing. If you got you and the wife or you and a friend or someone riding in the same car and you both want to wirelessly charge, this would be handy as an option on all trims. This is only the second car that I've seen personally with it as an option at all. The first time I saw this was in a Tesla and I really do think more automakers should find a way to integrate dual wireless charging into their cars. Now you can still charge on a wired connection. You've got a couple of USB-C ports right here, but this one's interesting. You can see the lines kind of move into this button over here. You see there's a picture of a battery and then there's a picture of a battery plus a USB logo. So we hit this button, but it's going to turn this light on down here. And it's going to match the light in the USB to that as well. This is kind of cool. So you can decide with this one port if you want it to only charge your device or if you want it to charge your device and allow data transfer to the infotainment system at the same time. Your last button right down here is an interesting one that I've never seen before in any vehicle, but Hyundai's introducing it in this car, UVC. If we hit this button, it's going to activate a UV sterilization LEDs inside this upper glove box right here. Now you can store stuff in here, no problem. But this is the first vehicle that I'm seeing that has the ability to sterilize your phone, your keys, whatever, with UVC light right there in the glove box. Moving back from there, of course, you got your dual cup holders right here. Open this center console lid looking in here. You do have a light in here for access at night and it doesn't look all that deep at first, but if you pull out this tray right here, which has a divider that apparently wants to pop out on me, pull out this tray and it goes even deeper. Now this goes pretty deep. It's got a little divider right here. You, you, there's actually another section ahead of that. You can kind of see right there. Wondering what in the world that's for. Well, I'll show you in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and drop my phone in here because I'm gonna have to show you guys something here in a minute. But we're not done with the center console of the car just yet. We're gonna come down here underneath the area where the wireless charging is. And now you're gonna see you've got a big open area right here where you can store pretty much anything you want, maybe a small purse, whatever you have. And you also have a 12 volt round port right here for charging other things. Definitely a lot of great storage in this new Hyundai Santa Fe. Looking over here at the passenger side of the dash, we did just talk about this upper glove box that serves both as storage and as a UV sterilization chamber, which once again, that's cool. But now we go down below that, you see you've got a nice little storage tray right here. You can put your pens or whatever. And then your lower glove box has an interesting way of opening. So most of them, you pull a latch to, on the front face towards you or push a button. This one, you just pull right here and it opens down and it's a fairly decent sized glove box. It's not insanely huge, but it's also not too tiny. It's really very usable, very interesting latch system. But now let's look up above the mirror at these controls up here. Now you do have some touch sensitive controls. This one right here, of course, is for your map lights right here. This button right here, tap it. It'll turn on all the interior lights in the car. And then you got some controls right here for sunroof. So here you've got front and rear. So let's focus on front right now. Slide the cover back right here, although it will automatically do it by itself. If you just push on the button, it's going to vent for you. You can see right there, it's vented. Push on it again, it's going to close it for you. But there are also directional controls. So if we pull back on this control, it's going to open that front sunroof for you. How nice is that? And of course, you want to close it back up, you can push it the other direction. But then we take this one that says rear. If we click this one backwards, you can see now it's sliding that cover back over the rear sunroof. Now what you have here is a fixed piece of glass. This cannot be opened. It is just a fixed piece of glass, but it does have that cover over it. And of course, once you're ready to kick the sun out of the car, you can of course push the button and close it all the way, or you can stop it at any point that you want. Maybe you just want a little bit of light. You can do that or just close it all the way. All right, on to the second row. But before we talk about the features and stuff back here, let's talk about sitting in it. Now, right now, the driver's seat is set to where I need to drive it. And honestly, these things are really reclined. That's better. Anyway, the driver's seat is currently set to where I need to drive it. I'm just a little over six feet tall. This is where it's really comfortable for me to drive in this position. This is me behind me. And for most people, this is probably gonna be all right. I mean, the feet do go up underneath the seat a little bit if you're tall. Now, of course, if you do find yourself behind a shorter person like right here, well then, hey, no problem whatsoever. And Lord, who reclined these seats? The seats recline. 
just thought you'd like to know that too. Headroom, really, really good. And I'm not just talking about the fact that there's a sunroof right here, but the headroom, even here on the sides, is really, really nice. All right, now let's take a more detailed look at the back seat area of the new Santa Fe. So you can see right here, your trim on the back doors is pretty much the same as the fronts. It looks the same, it looks really nice. You still got those soft touch materials right here, power window switches, and in front of those, three level heated seating. Cup holders, dual cup holders in each rear door. And down here, you got a bottle holder, more Bose speakers, of course, so once again, this being the limited trim. Here you got manual sunshades. Nice, nice addition for babies or people sensitive to sun or just don't want to look at the sun. Right here on the B pillar, you can see these are your rear climate vents Look, pointing right at you from the pillars, which is kind of a nice touch. It brings them up a little bit higher than they would be on the back of a center console, but lower than they would be on the ceiling. I kind of like this midpoint. They are fully adjustable, and of course, you still get that H design right there. Your H theme continues on the back seat right here. You got some places to hang grocery bags or whatever, and here is your back pocket, which is just hugely adjustable. That's insane. Moving around to the side of the front row seats, you got a USB-C port on each front seat back so your kids can charge their iPads or whatever in the back of the car on the road trip. And in between there, you got your center console. But check this out. This lid is dual hinged. Push right here, lift it open, and now you've got access into the same center console area that you just had from the front. That's really nice. But moving down, check this out. Pull this latch right here, and now you slide open. What's this? The bottom of the center console where I put my phone at. So you can put stuff in the bottom of the thing. You got your little divider. And if your rear seat occupants need access to that, they have a drawer that they can pull out and grab hold of whatever they need. That's kind of cool. I kind of like that center console. Looking at the second row seats themselves, what you're looking at right now is a 60-40 split rear bench seat for the second row. You can also option the new Santa Fe with two captain's chairs back here. However, that is gonna take your seating capacity down from seven to six. But take a look at these things right now. That same H theme pattern continues onto these back seats. These are manually adjustable. You got your lever here to tilt and recline. Right here in the center, pull down right here, and you've got more cup holders. You can put a lot of drinks back here. Now we're gonna look down here at the side of the seat. You're gonna see once again, here's that lever to tilt your seat back and forward. You got your sliding adjustment right here. And then you've got a button on the side below that first lever. Push this button and your seat will slide forward and tilt out of the way to give you access to the third row of the Santa Fe, the first ever three row Santa Fe. I gotta put those seats up real quick. All right, it's time to see if I can climb my tall fat self into the third row of the new Santa Fe. So we're gonna move that seat out of the way the way I just showed you and climb right on in now. <laughs> I am not a small person, so this does look very awkward. Oh, but I'm in. Ooh, and I could also already tell you, I don't like it. I am tall. I got this seat put back here and uh, it's okay, but with the long legs, you can see, you can already tell just looking at me, it's kind of awkward back here. I would personally reserve this for short adults or kids, of course. The seat is definitely not all the way back. I don't know that I want it all the way back in this case. Definitely reserve this row for your kids, for your short friends, whatever. Um, but you do have them here if you need them. Once again, this is a three row midsize SUV, not a three row full size SUV. So kind of adjust your expectations along those lines. If you need a massive third row, midsize is not for you, but it is usable and uh, it's okay back here. And it does have a couple of neat features that I wanna show you here. So I'll give you a better view of my knees right here. They're not touching the seat, but if we put this thing further back or reclined it, they would be, there, there's my feet. Ugh, I'm not a short person, so this is not the most comfortable place. Anyway, looking right here behind the rear door, these indents in the trim. I wish I'd seen this before because it looks like it's possibly a place to grab onto to help you pull yourself into the car, which would be very helpful. You do have speakers back here, which is nice. And you have third row air vents back here, USB-C charging, and this slot, which I'll tell you what that is for in just a minute. You've also got lighting back here. Turn those on and off. You got your own lights on this third row. Over here on the passenger side, you get the same dual cup holder, same USB-C charging and air vent. And then right here is a control for the fan for the third row. Now this only controls the fan on and off and the speed of the fan. It does not control temperature, but this is something I've never seen before. Usually rear climate controls of any type are on the second row, but you get it here in the third row. Whereas on the second row, you're at the mercy of whatever's going on up front. 
Not that you have a lot of control back here, but you do have the fan speed, which is kind of neat. Back from that, you got a 115 volt house type plug right here. So you do have your power inverter built right into the car. Always love to see that in any modern vehicle. Now your sunroof does not extend all the way over the head of the third row passengers, but with it all the way open, you can still see out and get a nice view of the sky above you even if you're in the third row, but you're just not gonna have it right above your head. You're gonna be looking forward a little bit. Now, fortunately, Hyundai did make it easy to get out of the third row. So when you're ready to get out of this space, just push this button right here on top of the second row seat and it's gonna get right out of your way. And now I'm gonna climb out of here off camera because nobody wants to see that. All right, let's open up into the rear of your Santa Fe and we'll talk about cargo space in a second. But first let's talk about how easy it is to control things back here. So you need more cargo space, you gotta put this third row seat down, quite easy. Pull right here, the headrest drops and just toss it forward. Same thing on the passenger side, pull and toss. That's all you gotta do. And of course your straps do secure to the backs of the seat via Velcro. Very nice, keeps those nice and tidy. And you see you still got access to your 115 volt back here. On the driver's side, you do have another 12 volt round power port right here. You got some back hooks back here and some fold out tie down hooks right here, kind of neat. So you some light cargo, maybe some light pickup truck duty in the back of this thing. Over here, you got buttons to drop your second row seats. Now these only release the seats. These are not full power seats. Push the button, you see you drop that second row the other one there's the driver's side massive storage area we'll talk specifically about what those measurements are here in a second now i've got the second row seats back up once again you do have to go around to the side doors and do that manually these releases are only to put them down it just releases them it doesn't they're not motorized but now i want to show you remember those indents those cutouts in the trim i sh showed you a minute ago i wanted to know what those are for those are for this right here so you can option your new santa fe with this cargo cover and it is spring loaded and it just pops right into those recesses in the trim and now you can just pull this thing back now you got a full cargo cover covering up anything behind your second row if you don't want people looking in the windows and seeing it kind of nice to have right there let's go ahead and take that back off because i've got more to show you all right so i want to open the rear of this cargo area back up now to talk about the space in the area itself first so as you saw it going up you probably saw those tail lights once again integrated into the lift gate which of course made those auxiliary lights down there necessary but what this allowed hyundai to do is give you a big wide and tall opening to be able to load pretty much anything you want into the back of this car now talking about cargo space with your third row in place you've got about 14 and a half cubic feet of cargo storage space obviously you can see that's not a heck of a lot but throw those third row seats down. Now you're looking at 40 and a half, almost 41 cubic feet of cargo storage space behind your second row. But hey, maybe you need even more. Put those second row seats down and now you get 79 and a half cubic feet of cargo storage space in your new Santa Fe. I'd say you could probably get a few sheets of plywood in here, maybe even an air mattress. Maybe you can take this thing if you're one of those people who likes to go camp in your crossover. Yeah, you might be able to pull that off. This thing's got some space in it. All right, it's time now to talk about the screens in the new Santa Fe. So we'll jump back up front here. We're looking at the 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster screen in this car. Now, one thing a lot of journalists, especially those such as Doug Demir, are going to talk about is how this is not the most configurable screen in the world. It's nice, but it's not the most configurable. So you pretty much have this set up with your tachometer over here, your speedometer over there in every gauge theme. If we switch between the drive mode, you see you get your sport mode, which is very nice and sporty looking, but it's pretty much the same. And of course, this is what you look like if you put it into your personalized drive mode. Now using the scroll wheel on the left spoke of the steering wheel, we're gonna cycle through some of the stuff in the center screen. Right here, you got your trip odometer for your current trip. Here's one sensory fueling. Since last reset, it gives you your trip, your drive time, and your average MPGs. Scroll down a little more, here's your auto stop information. And here's your tire pressure monitoring system. That's pretty much what you get there. Now, right here above this scroll wheel I was just talking about, this button looks like pages. So right now, we're on the trip odometer page. If we hit that page button, it's gonna take you over to your compass, which is a nice tab. Push it one more time, it's gonna give you your driver aid screen right here. So you can see the car sitting in your lanes. This is where it's gonna show you all the information for when you have adaptive cruise, lane keep assist, that kind of thing turned on. And if we zoom in a bit closer, look at that. It's not just an air car, it is a Santa Fe with the logo on the back and the brake lights light up when I hit the brakes. Okay, now I know I might've just made this gauge cluster screen sound a little bit lame, 
But the last thing I want to talk about in this screen is the coolest and most important feature. And that is your blind spot cameras. Now this is something that Hyundai and Kia have been doing for quite a few years now. And I think it's the greatest thing in the world. Really, I haven't seen anyone else adopt it. If they have, I don't know about it. So check this out. Look at your speedometer. I'm going to put on the left turn signal. And suddenly it becomes a camera view looking down your blind spot. You still get your speed up here now in a kind of a digital readout form, which is really cool. And we focus over here on the tachometer. Same thing. Now you've got the view down the right side. You still have your tachometer up here in a digital form now, which is really, really cool. I love this. This is the greatest thing in the world. We have these screens in cars now. Why not utilize the screens and the camera technology on the outside of the car to do this very thing? Every manufacturer that offers a screen for a gauge cluster in their car should be doing something like this. This is brilliant. Now, glancing over here, I haven't been able to do a lot of research into this, but this looks to be like a finger or thumbprint sensor, which I know Hyundai's been doing and a lot of auto manufacturers are starting to do. So perhaps to set up a user profile, you can select that or start the car or whatever with your thumbprint. I haven't really found much on that, but I'd say that's exactly what that is because it kind of looks like the thumbprint for you know, a little Blackberry or something. Shifting focus now to the also 12.3 inch infotainment screen right here. And let's go ahead and start with on home because this is pretty much your home page. It shows you a few different panes right here on the home screen. Here's your navigation. You tap on that, it's gonna bring it up full view. Back out of that, back to the home screen. Here's your radio controls. You can pull those up full view as well. Gives you a list of stations right here. And what's nice though is it moves your navigation over here so that never really comes off the screen even when you're messing with your radio. But of course, if you don't want it there, just swipe it off and you get this stuff right here. But if you want that back, pull it over. That's kind of nice, you can have it or not. Now, of course you see you got AM, FM, all that good stuff over here. If we hit our media button down here on the console, it's going to take you to this menu screen right here where you got your FM, sounds of nature, AM, old Bluetooth audio. You do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. They're kind of blacked out right now because there's nothing connected. But you do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard on all trims of your new Hyundai Santa Fe. Now I want to swipe back over here and go to sounds of nature. We're going to see what this is. Lively Forest is the first one to come up. On a sailing ship. City at Dawn. Experience the universe. Ooh, cosmic. Rainy day. I don't think I need that one. It's been raining enough here in Tennessee. Moment of meditation. Harbingers of Spring. A Summer Night's Rest. Oh, Autumn Sentiments. Interesting. And Warmth in Winter. Oh, listen, listen to that fire and that soothing music. I don't know how that's the sound of nature, but okay. <laughs> but if you want some nature sounds or something soothing, you've got that in your Santa Fe. And while we're on our home screen, let's swipe down here like you would on an Android phone. And you got a few quick setting options right here, your illumination, your illumination brightness, navigation guidance, that kind of thing. Just a few quick items you can use if you need to access them fast. Swipe that back up. Click over here, up here where it says guest, it's got this menu and you can set up different profiles for guests, different drivers, that kind of thing, and apparently access an online owner's manual. From the home screen, we'll swipe over here to the right. You got different settings in here, such as phone projection, voice memos, you can get your weather. You got Hyundai Pay, which is an interesting feature in the higher trends where you can link a card to it or something. You can pay tolls, parking fees, that kind of thing, right here from your car. Of course, there's your setup menu, vehicle diagnostics, maintenance scheduling, notifications and your online manual. Actually, there's a, quite a lot in the system and it is a pretty responsive system. It's not terrible. I really can't complain about any kind of lag really. If there is any, it ain't much. It's a nice looking system. Another thing I like about these two screens is they're not separate units. You just got this one long curved unit right here with the infotainment kind of angled towards the driver. Very driver centric, I do like that. While we're looking at the screen, let's throw it into reverse. And here's your backup camera. Now I gotta say, I don't know how well my GoPro is gonna portray this, but I do actually like the backup camera in this car. It actually looks pretty nice. 
Here's your rear view. You got a top down view right here next to it. And if I turn the wheel, you can see you get your trajectory lines that are gonna tell you where all of your wheels are gonna go at any given time. And it's yelling at me because someone's crossing behind me, which is good, it's got rear cross traffic alert. But you see right there, I do love that. It tells you where your wheels are gonna go at whatever steering angle you're, you're putting into it. Now, a little while ago, I showed you this button down here. It looks like a camera with a P in it. So we push that button. And now what you've got is a front facing camera. So you see that orange Veloster? There it is right there. You got your view at the front of the car with your top down view with those same trajectory lines. But now they're telling you where your wheels are gonna go going forward. Kind of cool. But over here, you got a series of settings right here. So let's click on this button right here. It's gonna throw a menu out here. Click right here. And now you got looking straight down at just the nose of the vehicle, your lines turn with the wheels again to show you where those tires are gonna go. That's kind of neat. It is a Santa Fe and it throws the Hyundai logo right there on the hood. Nice little detail right there. Um, out from there, you push this button right here. Now it's gonna be looking down both sides of the car at the front wheels. Watch me turn the wheels. Right, there you go. So now it's looking at the front wheels of the car. You know, that way if you're pulling into a driveway or parking spot or something, you're worried that your kids, or your pets are, are, you know, in the way and you don't wanna hit them, or you're worried about hitting a curb on one side or the other, nice close up view right there. One more button right here is gonna give you a full view uh, out the front camera without the top down, but I kinda like having the top down right here. Go over here, you can click right here, you get that rear view camera now without putting it into reverse. Once again, you can click, you get yourself a top down view of just the rear of the car. You can get looking down the sides now at both rear wheels, same thing, kids, pets, curbs, you don't wanna hit them, great view right there. Now you get just the full view out the back without the top down, let's bring that top down back. Now right here, you've got this button right here, click on this, and now you've got a full surround view of your new Santa Fe, and you can move this thing around all you want. And I love the detail, the attention to detail they put into this thing. You still got the Santa Fe script on the back, Ah, oh, no brake lights. Dang, I was hoping that was going to be a thing. But you can scroll all the way around the vehicle, all the way. You can see front, rear, every side. Pull it down a little bit. You can see the top. I love, love, love this. All right, it's time to get up underneath the hood, talk about the business end of the new Santa Fe. Of course, we're talking about the powertrain. So every version, no matter what trim you get of your new Santa Fe, comes standard with a 2.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine, creating 277 horsepower, 311 pound-feet of torque, mated to an eight-speed wet-style dual-clutch automatic transmission. As far as fuel economy is concerned, according to the window sticker on this car, we got an EPA estimated 20 miles per gallon city, 29 highway, 24 combined. Now, while I do my research on vehicles, I reference a lot of different things, and Car and Driver always seems to come up when I research vehicles, so I love looking at their figures. According to Car and Driver, they were able to test this, this standard two and a half liter powertrain to 20 miles per gallon city, 27 highway, 23 combined. They're also able to test this thing to a zero to 60 of right around 6.2 seconds. So we're not talking lightning fast, but we're not talking about a slouch either. As far as towing is concerned, if you do option the SRT trim, which is actually one trim below this, you could tow up to 4,500 pounds. Otherwise you're getting towing right around 3,500 pounds. Now the other powertrain option you have for your new Santa Fe is a hybrid powertrain, which is available only on three trims, your SEL, your Limited, and your upcoming Calligraphy. What you get here is 1.6 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine, made it to a six-speed automatic transmission, paired with a 44.2 kilowatt electric motor. Total output for this is about 231 horsepower, 271 pound-feet of torque, a zero to 60 of about 7.6, a towing capacity is severely reduced to 2,000 pounds. Now this is a $1,500 option that's available on those three trims. So you're not looking at a huge premium to get that added fuel economy. Um, however, that has to be what you want out of your new Santa Fe. If you're looking for power or towing, you definitely don't want the hybrid. Now our tester here is configured as a front wheel drive vehicle. Standard is front wheel drive on all trims. However, all trims can also be optioned for an additional $1,800 with Hyundai's H-Track all wheel drive system. There's that H theme again. All right, y'all, so we've talked about features, space, powertrain. Let's talk about the other important point. That would be pricing. So currently your 24 Santa Fe is available in four trim options, soon to be five whenever the calligraphy finally drops. Starting out with your base model SE trim, which obviously is gonna have the least amount of features. You're talking about a starting price right around 33.9. Now these base prices are pulled directly from Hyundai USA website 
as of last night before I shot the video, last night being February 16th. So these are the most current prices as of the filming of this video. Stepping up to your SEL trim, of course you get a few more features, not sure exactly what the specifics are on that. Start right around 36,004. Going up one more step to the trim right below this one, the XRT off-road trim, that's gonna start you right around 40,600. Next up, of course, is what we have here, the limited trim, starting price right around 43,300. And then there's the calligraphy trim. Now, I can't find official Hyundai pricing on the website on that because it's not even available to build or even research on the Hyundai website at this point. Hopefully that's coming soon. Hopefully um, if they get one of those in here, I'll be able to test it too. So of course I had to do a little more research. According to an article I found on Car and Driver, who I'm sure gets a lot better information than I ever will, they've got an estimated price right around 47.8, 47.9. So you're probably looking at pushing $50,000 with the calligraphy trim, but who knows, we'll see when the time comes what that is. All right, one other cool feature I wanted to show you before we drive the car. Remember me talking about these two buttons on the side of the remote. Now this is really, really cool. Now suppose you're parked in a spot and you got a car right here that's too close to you. You got a car over here on the right that's too close to you. You can't get in the car. How in the world are you supposed to get in your car? So first off, we're gonna remote start the vehicle. All right, now, that's running. You have these two buttons here, a P forward and a P backward. So let's hold P forward and watch as the car moves itself forward out of the parking spot. There's no one in this vehicle whatsoever. And it's moving itself forward. Once you're done, just release and it stops and puts itself back in park. Okay, so you need to back out of the spot. You're parked forward, you need to back out. Same thing. Hold the other button. It goes into reverse. And now the vehicle is reversing itself. And there is no one in the car. Release, and it stops. Puts itself back in park and shut it back down. How cool is that? This is definitely not new. Hyundai and Kia have been doing this for a minute. It's the first one I've been able to test though. That is super, super cool. All right, let's get out here and test drive the 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe Limited. And we'll just start out right off the bat with getting this thing up on the highway and seeing how it feels on the interstate. Since the deal is right here at the interstate, it's perfect. Now, first thing to note, getting on this ramp, no problem. It's only a 6.2 to 60, but no problem getting on the interstate, just as you'd expect out of a modern car. I love those blind spot cameras in the gauge cluster. That is the greatest thing in the world. And this is actually a great test of how this thing feels to drive, what the suspension's like, because our Tennessee interstates leave a bit to be desired, especially in the winter time. So going over a few of those bumps where they've patched up the potholes, you can feel them, but they're not harsh. As far as just cruising on mostly smooth pavement, it's fine, you know, no road noise, nothing like that. Maybe a little bit of wind noise, but not terrible. As far as just sitting in the seat, it's a mostly comfortable seat. I mean, I can't really complain. It's nothing special. It doesn't have any kind of crazy sports car bolstering or anything like that. It's not a big cushy luxury car seat, but for what it is, it's reasonable and I don't feel bad in it whatsoever. I think I could ride in the seat for several hours and not really have much of a complaint whatsoever. Added benefit, of course, is you get the heated and cooled seats in this thing, making it that much more comfortable. All right, let's go ahead and test out the acceleration, zero to 60 and go. I can believe every bit of a six second zero to 60 on that. I wasn't gonna give it everything it's got, but uh, I can believe a six second on that one just about. One thing you are gonna get though, because this is a four cylinder engine, you're gonna get plenty of noise coming from that engine when you accelerate hard whatsoever. That's just the nature of four cylinders, unfortunately. But you know, unless you're under hard acceleration, you really don't have to worry about that. Now your new Santa Fe does come with all of your typical driver assist or safety features that you like, you know, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, you know, that kind of thing, forward collision avoidance, stuff like that. Um, it also comes with adaptive cruise control and it's kind of a smart version of adaptive cruise control that includes lane keeping assist, following distance, that kind of thing. It doesn't have a fully autonomous driving system, but it does have the ability to steer you in a lane, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna activate the system. It's set speed at about 50 and let it go. And now it's actually centering itself in the lane. You see my hands are up here, nowhere to be, nowhere near the wheel. 
and it's actually steering itself in this lane right now. Now, of course, it also has the adaptive cruise, so if a vehicle was to cut in front of me and slow down, it would also slow down with it. It would speed up with the vehicle in front of you, uh, you know, up to your set speed, that kind of thing. If I want a lane change, let's see if it'll do a lane change. I don't think it'll execute a self lane change type of thing. Hit that steering button again and watch it steer itself. So we're going around a curve here. I'm offering no steering input whatsoever, although my hands are close and I'm looking forward, which of course it's always monitoring you with this little camera system up here to make sure that you are indeed keeping focus. And notice that Jeep in front of me, it slowed down because it was going slow. Now that it's moved over, it's gonna speed back up and it's still following that lane. It's not bad. Now, if this is truly a semi-autonomous system or if the lane keeping assist is just that good, I'm not entirely certain, but it's actually doing fairly well. Another curve coming up here, slightly sharper than the rest of them. I'm ready to take over if I need to, but I don't need to. Keep hands on wheel, see? It did tell me right there, keep hands on wheel. So it'll let you go a little while before saying, hey, yo, touch the wheel again. So you do have to give it a touch every once in a while, maybe a little bit of input here and there, but still that's, pre that's, pre that's pretty cool. All right, now we're gonna test out these paddle shifters with this eight speed DCT. Now we're in drive right now, obviously, otherwise we wouldn't be moving. But while we're in drive and moving, we'll pull on one of the paddles and now you're in manual shifting mode. So we're in fifth gear. There's six, let's drop back down to fifth. Six, seven, Okay, so I mean, it's decently quick. It is a dual clutch. It's not like the dual clutch transmission in you know a supercar where it's just lightning quick shifts. I mean, the second you think about it, it does it. It's not like that, but it's still a fairly decent DCT. It's fairly decently quick. If you do want to go back into drive for manual mode, just turn the shifter back up to drive and it'll put it back into automatic mode for you. All right, normal mode, 20 miles an hour throttle response. Yeah, it's okay. But now let's drop back down to 20 and drop it in sport mode and see what the response is. Okay, yeah, not a sports car, but it does definitely improve the throttle response in sport mode. That's very noticeable. That's actually quite good. For a mid-size crossover, that is quite good. Okay, let's do one more suspension test going over these railroad tracks here. See just what it feels like. And those are good railroad tracks. You can usually drive about 30 over those. That's not bad. I mean, you feel them. You feel them, you hear them. It's not soaking things up like a Rolls or anything like that, but it's not harsh. It's about what you want out of a mid-size family crossover. As far as handling, As far as handling, it's still a mid-sized family crossover, but I mean, it could definitely be far, far worse. Overall, I'm actually pretty happy with this thing. All right, y'all, so that's gonna do it for the all new, fully redesigned 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe. I like this thing. As someone who really doesn't get to drive very many Hyundais or Korean cars at all, really, I gotta say, I really do like this thing. If I were looking for a brand new mid-sized family crossover, I would definitely put this thing on my shopping list because from what I can see in this test, it is a great option. It's comfortable, it's fast enough for highway driving. You can even tow some with it. Decent gas mileage, way better if you get the hybrid, of course. It's got nice features, great tech, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, heated cooled seats, all that stuff. Really nice to have in any modern vehicle. Styling wise, love it or hate it, you gotta admit one thing, it's a daring design. Hyundai really, really decided to take a chance on this thing and some may not like it. I like it, I think it looks cool. But I know there's gonna be folks that disagree with me, but that happens with pretty much every vehicle out there, so I'm not even worried about it. I like what Hyundai did with this car. I really, really do. And if you are in the market for a brand new mid-size family crossover, I encourage you definitely put this thing on your shopping list, go check one out, test drive it, and see what you think for yourself. I think you might actually like this thing. Anyways, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this review, you wanna see the other reviews on the channel, make sure you go back and watch them. If you like what you see on the channel, be sure to subscribe. Also follow over on Facebook and Instagram at that car vlog channel, two other great ways to know when new videos go up. Once again, huge special thanks to the folks at Rusty Wallace Hyundai here in Knoxville, Tennessee for allowing me to use this vehicle for today's review. Once you get done watching, make sure you go to that description, click on that link, go to their website, check out their inventory, maybe come test drive one of their cars. Tell them Andy sent you. Anyways, y'all, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.